Trip and welcome to my blog. Remember these? My gorgeous 1950s styly, gorgeous, lovely, sort of top heavy look to them. Top heavy lovelies? Yeah, they're fantastic, aren't they? I really like these and in this video I'm going to show you how I adapted them to fit the van because these are actually an aftermarket Harley Davidson custom kind of thing. Uh, just trawling the internet looking for these headlight surrounds. I was looking at old ones that were originally fitted on cars and they had funny ridges in and they were all rotten and rusty and I thought nah I don't really like that. Uh, I know you can get these kind of stainless steel ones polished that look like eyelids that fit under the standard rim but I wanted to do something a little bit different because I like it when headlamp rims are painted because then they adjust the look of the bodywork because they fool your eyes into thinking they're actually part of the bodywork when of course they're not if they're just chrome then they look like a kind of separate entity so in this video I'm going to show you how I modified these and adapted them to make them fit here's an original section from the original front panel that I kept and I'm so glad I did because I can use it for this mocking up exercise so I've got the headlamp ring dropped on there Looks really smart, looks really brilliant. Without this in, it does look like a protruding tube. It does look a bit too deep, I think, anyway. But I think with the lamp in there, it fills it out nicely. And I think it looks dead smart. So a couple of important considerations need to be made, mostly due to beam setting. So you still need to be able to adjust the lamp so that you can set up the beam correctly. And it will work as it is so I'm gonna leave it well alone because of course the original headlamp would have protruded from the bezel so the bezel would have been bigger so that the lamp would have fitted through so that it can be adjusted and it remains independent from the bezel of course now it remains behind the bezel there's a little gap there but you know, I'm not going to stress about that the other thing you'd have had to have done as well is reduce the height of this which I wasn't adverse to because I did think it looked a little bit high, but that would have meant cutting all the back off and possibly reforming a lip around the back would have been a big job that, so I left that. So what I need to do is I need to somehow attach this to the headlamp. Now the only way I can logically think of attaching it is via the bowl on the back. So the fitting that the headlamp actually attaches to this bowl, I somehow need to attach that bezel to the bowl the big problem is I've gone off and bought plastic bowls and I thought about trying to attach something under the screws but this is going to put a lot of pressure on the fittings. Would be nicer if it was on the bowl so what I'm going to do is go off and buy some steel bowls first. Metal headlight bowl fitted. Gives me a bit more confidence knowing that this is steel. Of course I can weld something to this, it's got a lot more strength. I didn't realise it actually came with chrome headlight bezels as well. But how on earth you get these to fit, I just do not know. Because where it's lipped over on the back, the lip's too wide. There's absolutely no way that those would fit on there without filing some off or making some kind of adjustments somewhere. And the finish is utterly horrific. So I toyed with many different ideas how I could attach this to there. See how it looks like it stood out too far now because of the absence of the light inside. It's really weird. Perhaps it doesn't from your viewpoint but it certainly did to mine. So yeah I've got to, I've got to make this fit obviously and I think I'm just going to go down the same route as the original manufacturer had and just make some very slight adjustments. I had made this section up so I shrank this section of steel I was going to make some little brackets the problem is you see you've got to be aware that you don't want to interfere in any way with the beam adjustment so if you weld anything to this and then it gets in the way of the headlight itself then it's going to stop the beam uh, from being adjusted so I've got to keep things well away from there I have actually got quite a gap between uh, the edge of the bowl and the headlamp rim so what I kind of sort of thought about doing was just welding a piece of metal to these little ears so there's two ears one there and one there 
and that's where the chrome ring just sort of hooks under so what I thought I could do is just simply copy the idea why make it any more complicated so just make some extensions on here I could always put some rubber over it act as a bit of a buffer and then what I could do then is on the rear lip of the bezel I just weld two ears here uh, they can come down quite a quite a little way. actually not too far because you've got to remember that you've got to hook it over the headlight so I don't know maybe two or three millimeters down and then what I thought I could do then is those ears on the back of the bezel could just hook under those and squeeze between the rubber gasket and the headlight bowl itself like that you see see that's jammed in there really nicely so literally just lift it lift it over put it down and then I'll have to pack out between here and the headlight bezel with some sort of some little packing device again perhaps I could weld something to this I mean I had kind of thought about welding a couple of pegs onto here and then welding this onto the headlamp and having some holes in it and just sort of lifting it over with some pegs or maybe even a bayonet fitting you know sort of hook it over and turn it round, lock it in position but all this is getting over engineered and too complicated uh, it's always the path I sort of go down it's a bit of a tendency of mine to over engineer everything and I like to try and sort of keep things a bit more simple these days because I just can't move forward with anything so this is what I intend to do anyway. I'm going to give that a whirl. I've removed the bowl from the front panel section. The first thing I'm going to do is widen out these ears. So where it's folded up, I'm going to planish that out so that it gives me a wider point to spot weld a bracket to. I've got some stainless steel sheet. I'm using this not really for corrosion protection reasons, but because it's so more rigid than the mild steel that I could have used. So I'm gonna cut off a strip 25 millimeters wide, which will then fit into the little piece I've made on the headlight bowl. I'm going to joggle it across, so I've still got the step out because I'd like to mount some rubber perhaps on the end of this ear and then that rubber will protect the paintwork on the inside of the headlamp bezel. I was having a chat to somebody about weld through primers saying that a lot of them scratch off very easily and they recommended this stuff to me. It's actually an etched primer but it can be used as a weld through as well and it does not scratch off. I'm really impressed with it. I'm looking rearwards at the bowl sat on top of the bezel uh, this gives me a good indication as to where I need to cut the ears off around here. I was obviously going to put ears on to the headlight bezel as well that we're going to tuck behind. The problem is if I line them up with these, I think they're going to get in the way of each other as you try and put the headlight on. If I put them further up, then that'll be easy to slide behind. But then I might be getting side to side motion because what you got to remember is these ears if they're wedged behind this rim they're obviously going to stop the headlight bezel from moving forwards but not back and it's back that I need to sort out really so I'm thinking that I might move them around here a bit more so perhaps I could slide them around to here and that would stop the side to side motion and then the tops would stop it from coming forward. That's my kind of thinking at the moment. The problem is, you see, you've got to get all this together with the headlight in. So you've got to get the bezel over the top of the headlight to slide that in. So let's leap forward a few hours. A few things have changed. I'll just tell you what I've done and I think it's going to be absolutely fine. What I've done, I've welded the ears on the headlamp bowl and I found some of this rubber edge protection and this will go over there I'll be bonded on 
after I've painted this. So this will be primed, seam sealed round, stop the ingress of water from getting between the sheets of metal, and then it'll be painted again. And then these will be bonded onto there, and these act as a perfect sort of buffer between the metal on the headlamp bowl and the metal on the rim. We don't want to scratch the paint off. So I've changed my mind slightly. I said I was going to have extensions from the headlamp rim so the bezel was going to have these extensions hanging down which was going to tuck behind this wasn't going to work because you've got too much going on and when you tip the bezel up to get it to go on the ears are too long and so I just thought do you know what scrap the idea so what I've done is I cut some more metal out of the piece of uh, shrank metal that I showed you earlier and I've made up these little brackets, spot welded them inside. And what these do is the the ears on the bowl with the rubbers on locate into that little section there. And they locate into there. They can't move backwards or forwards because it's a perfect snug fit. The only downside of uh, this is I still may have a little bit of side to side movement because this is so much larger than the original headlamp rim because you've got this little bit of a gap going on. So I've welded another set in each side to stop any side to side motion because this will just butt up against the um, headlamp uh, bowl. Um, and I've, I've drilled a hole in underneath as well of course the final securing screw. Let's try it on. It's gone together very well. A few little bits of filing with a belt sander on these uh, side pieces that just stop it from going to side to side. The ears have located perfectly and that rubber just sits in there nicely, acting as a nice buffer so nothing gets scratched. Uh, what else could I say? Ah, just one more thing. Yeah, where that lower hole is there, so there's, there's a hole there, and that's dead opposite the peak, which lines up with the top adjustment clip. So that top adjustment clip lines up perfectly with the centre of the peak, and there's a hole just to the left of it, as if you were looking at it head on, you know, from here, there's a hole there. Now, if you line that hole up with the welded seam, so that, that welded seam lines up with that hole and that gives you the peak then at the top. Worked really well, couldn't be any happier. That's not going anywhere, nowhere at all. Um, there's no forwards, there's no forwards or backwards motion or side to side. Of course this has been made more complicated because it's slightly larger than the original so there's no chance of it kind of engaging with the metal or the rubber, of course. Um, the rubber can't hold it. What I'm gonna to have to do next is make up a new rubber. So I'm gonna buy a big sheet of rubber, uh, two or three mil thick, I think it is. And I'm going to make a new rubber for the back so that the rubber comes right out to the edge of this. And that'll stop it kind of looking like it's floating in the air. Um, right, I'll just try it on the front panel, and if it fits the front panel, then I think I'm going to call this a success. Another quick tip, always keep your eyes open for things like this. This was just a piece of scrap that was being thrown away at a place that I used to work at, so I grabbed it. And it's great for headlamp mounting panels, ever wide sort of radius applications and hammer forming things and it's great for just using for things like this I mean I just cut a little bracket out of this earlier and when I cut it out with the tin snips it deformed it very slightly so I made this bracket up and it's great just for final dressing up so I just put it on there like that just dress it up get it nice and flat again it's great because it's a nice solid piece of steel hey nice hammer who'd like this I'll give it away later
all finished, very happy. Went on absolutely no problem whatsoever, very straightforward to fit and very centralized. I'm pretty happy with the uh, how central the lamp is inside the hole and it's kind of like quite a nice distance away. I got plenty of inward adjustment which is really handy because obviously this beam is going to have to be set, it's going to be tipped probably down into the side slightly to get the correct angle for the dipped beam. Um, so this gap won't be equal as it is now, I mean it's perfectly equal at the moment so that means that it's going to be slightly in the wrong place. Of course what I can do is uh, if I get a horrible gap I could always possibly just tweak the tabs slightly just to try and level it up a little bit afterwards but uh, I'm quite happy with that, I don't see a problem at all and it's extremely strong. There's no way that that is going to be breaking loose. No movement in it at all, really. It's going to be so much nicer when I fit the rubber gaskets or fit the new gasket. Like I said, I'm going to make one up and then it won't look like it's kind of floating in the air. It doesn't look that bad anyway, but I'm going to do it anyway so that the seal comes right to the edge. And it'll just finish it off a little bit nicer than it is now. So massive thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope you got something from it. Get busy guys, get doing projects, enjoy your life, enjoy your projects. You're gonna be a much happier person if you get on and you do things with your life than if you just sit there thinking about it. So yeah, these lights, uh, where did I get them from? I bought them from eBay. I'll put a link in the video description of a supplier of these. I can't guarantee this link's gonna work forever, of course. And if you can't find them or the link doesn't work, then just simply search for them on eBay because there were multiple sellers selling them when I bought them. And I paid around £20 for these delivered from China, £20 each. And um, I think they're really well made. Uh, I have obviously no affiliation to the people that supply or make these or anything like that. So you just have to do your homework if you can't find them. Hope you can if you want them. So moving along, hammer time. You can't touch this. So the last winner, David Burke. Quick picture of David with his hammer. So the last competition was, what's the purpose of my van? What's it gonna be used for? Of course it's gonna be used as a catering van, cake and coffee van. So let's go and check the answers and see who won the competition, who won this hammer. Well done, David Parker. You are the winner. All you've got to do is send me an email. My email is in the video description. Just tell me what your address is and I'll post this off to you at my own expense, of course. So who'd like to win a hammer? Another hammer, the hammer that was just used in the video you watched. All you've got to do is ask the simple question. When I lift up the side of my van, obviously it's gonna be a catering van. What is the beverage machine called that's going to be inside? of that lovely, beautiful side opening door. Simply answer that question in the comments section. Please don't send me an email. Send it to the comments section because that's where the winner will be picked from. I'd just like to add quickly, I forgot to mention again that this was for a Harley Davidson. It's like a customized part. So this is a seven inch headlight, Harley Davidson. Just search for that. Hopefully you'll be able to find it and have a little tip. I'm off. Bye for now. Thanks to all those that helped me out with your donations. Much appreciated. Until next time. Bye for now.